Hey you guys, hope you're doing well. I got a ton of amazing feedback in my last video that you guys loved it, loved the style of video, and just loved kind of what it had to offer. Um, so I thought today I would kind of expand a little bit more on kind of the analytics of it or the reasons why and the comparisons why the shots turned out different from each other. If you guys haven't checked out the video yet, make sure to hit the card above to be able to check out that video first before diving into this uh, comparison, this analytics. But um, yeah, today I'm just gonna be showing you guys the differences between about seven images and why they turned out different from each other, the shots that my brother took versus the shots that I took. Rep and Vision today. If you guys haven't checked out my merch, make sure to check it out. I feel like I gotta show off this, this shirt a little bit better, you know? Got the... There we go, it's all reverse my monitor. Vision logo up here, oh my god, I can't do it right. But point being, <laughs> go check out my merch on my website and uh, go purchase if you guys wanna support me. So the first image that I wanted to compare between us two was gonna be this image that uh, my brother took of um, some of the waterfowl there, right? So we got a couple of buffalo heads floating down in the bottom corner and uh, we've got the river flowing by. We've got uh, some background here between, um, I guess like the, the marsh plants um, or the water plants and um, the kind of like the vines in the background, right? And I wanted to kind of show the difference between this image and this image. Because um, the, the biggest thing, probably one of the biggest things that is new for people doing wildlife photography is the, the need to get eye level with birds and to compose a good foreground. Because in other types of photography, typically if you're coming from a different type of photography, it's not quite so important to be able to get foreground in images. Uh, while it's not necessarily a bad thing ever, and I would argue it's probably a good thing, it's extremely much more important in wildlife photography. And also being able to get eye level with birds. With no other subject or species, do you really have to find yourself laying on the ground to be able to get eye level with the subject too often? But in wildlife photography, you do. And that um, kind of that newness to the subject and newness to that style um, made it more difficult for my brother to get as clean of a shot. As you can see here, the water kind of like looks kind of just like is all over the frame and you get a lot of weird colors and stuff in the image versus when you have an image that kind of just nicely smoothly um, blends into the point where the bird is at it gives a really nice result with wildlife photography. So it's a super simple fix that a lot of times takes a while for beginner uh, wildlife photographers to get into the habit. And don't worry, today we're not just gonna be roasting my brother. Um, I'm actually gonna talk about something that he did really well that I need to learn to do better in. Um, but honestly, this is just, a, this is just a, a realistic look at things that can be improved a lot of times with beginning wildlife photographers. So that's image number one. Image number two is gonna be comparing this image versus this image. And while it's not a huge difference, something that comes big into play right here is the ability to be able to know how to get close to birds, how to approach birds, right? Because animals, all wildlife in general, is very, um, typically more often than not, skittish. And so it's very different from any other type of photography in which you're capturing a subject that doesn't want to work with you. It's not going to allow you to pose it. It's not going to allow you to wait for the right moment where the sun crosses a certain point in the sky, stuff like that, but it's incredibly varying. The subjects will never cooperate with you exactly how you want to cooperate, it seems like. So you have to kind of know how to get close enough to the subjects to make them do what you want, or I should say, capture them in the right places versus just you know accepting where you're at and kind of taking the shots from there. And so my brother did a great job on his first day out he did a great job of trying but there is a difference you know in the ability to be able to get close and capture these birds up close and his lack of knowledge of how to approach him um, kind of played into that so in this particular scenario between these two shots I was able to um, find a tree that I found I could sneak up because it was wide enough. It was a set of two tree trunks right next to each other. And it was wide enough to where I knew that I could sneak up behind those as the white crown sparrow flock was right behind it. And then I could just lay down perfectly on the ground and super slowly just inch out from there. And that technique, that strategy gave me the ability to be able to get that shot versus my brother was trying a different technique of like trying to go back around a hill over on the side and trying to photograph from there, but he could only get so close before they flew off. And this was by far his closest image of that, um, but he really wasn't able to get any closer than that. And a lot of the other shots turned out much further away. Next, I wanted to kind of just show the difference between this shot 
in this shot because we had almost identical shots, if you can't tell here. We actually, I believe we captured this goose in, in like pretty much the same moment uh, positioning. I don't know for sure because I wasn't watching him when I did, did it and he wasn't watching me, but the positioning was pretty much identical here between these two birds. I think it's the same bird. And so it's just interesting to see the two different results. Two things I wanna notice there is first of all, like I said before, the ability to get ground level with it perfectly versus my brother was crouched and I was actually laying on the ground plays a huge difference. But then second beyond that is gonna be knowing how to adjust your exposures correctly. My brother wasn't able to get quite as good of an exposure because of two reasons. One, because he slightly overexposed the background and overexposed the bird where he should have left the bird probably a little bit darker, maybe two or three stops darker versus um, mine, which I was able to get a little bit more balanced of an exposure range. But then beyond that, the second thing is really, I shot at a slightly different angle, if you can't tell. The wooden beams in the background are actually different wooden beams. So it kind of looks like it's the same, but it's not. And the angle I shot at was less harsh of sunlight versus the angle that he shot at, was a little bit more directly into the hills sunlight in the background. So th that difference actually plays a huge part in it. Me knowing that the background had to be a little bit less hard lit played a huge role in being able to balance that exposure well versus not knowing how much the background plays into that. So that's another big thing as a beginning wildlife photographer to kind of recognize and I guess realize and um, take uh, kind of get better at. And uh, lastly, the last image that I wanted to point out is just a single image. And I think this image is really cool because when my brother explained this to me, this is really where me as a quote unquote pro, this is where my brain doesn't go as often. My brother tried to create a creative image here. And for me, this is a Canada geese, right? I've taken a billion shots of Canada geese. I'm just trying to get the most the best image, the, the most standard looking image that I can of him because in my brain it's like, okay, this is the same bird I've seen over and over again. I'm not gonna try to create something out of this. And it kind of slips my mind. But my brother attempted to do what he explained in that video, if you'll see it, a, a geese in a row video. Um, so like kind of like ducks in a row, he tried to do a geese in a row type of image where it's telling a story of a geese walking behind another geese kind of following it, right? And even though the image has, you know, other things that can be worked on, the creativity, simply the creativity of this image is beyond the creativity of any image that I captured that day. <laughs> and so I think as experienced wildlife photographers, sometimes we fall into ruts of just doing the same thing over and over and over again. And we forget to try to tell a story, be unique, be creative with it. And my brother did a great job of that. So I really wanted to point that out that inexperience is not necessarily something that's just like, oh, well, I shouldn't try then. First of all, you should be practicing. But then second of all, it's also something where like, you can take advantage of that. You can try out unique things. It is the best time in your whole wildlife photography journey to try out unique things because you have very little people judging you, very little expectations on yourself, and the whole world is your oyster, right? <laughs> so I think that's really cool and I just wanted to point that out to you guys. So hopefully these seven images helped you guys kind of like, um, kind of analyze your own wildlife photography maybe if you're starting out or just helped improve your wildlife photography if you're already deep into it. And again, I just wanna thank my brother for being on it. If you guys think you know if my brother's younger or older, let me know in the comments. That was kind of an interesting topic last time in the last video, but let me know if you think he's older, younger. If you haven't seen the video, go check out that video at the end of this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you guys enjoy the rest of your day. Don't forget to subscribe below if you wanna see more content like this, and I can't wait to see you guys in the next video.